Are you a Mac user who's leveling up your virtual presentations, maybe through Zoom, Teams, or another web conferencing software? You may have already started to explore the virtual camera so that you can bring in graphics, which can definitely stand out across Zoom meetings, make them a little bit more interesting and help the people on the call. However, you may have been frustrated with, okay, how do I bring in my audio features? And we are specifically gonna focus on Ecamm today, which is a product, a streaming software for Mac users, which is what I prefer to use for my virtual camera. It's also what I'm using right now to stream live to YouTube, but there's a new feature and I'm pretty excited about it. So today we are going to talk about Ecamm's virtual microphone, meaning I don't just bring in graphics like the one I just showed that would show up in a Zoom meeting. I can also bring in things like sound effects, <laughs> which I don't really use very often in meetings, but maybe you wanna play music and you can layer in some music and start and stop those things. If it's in Ecamm and it makes noise, it's gonna be available through your virtual microphone. and. Just to preface, this is for the pro plan, which is also the plan that you need for the virtual camera. So if you have a virtual camera and Ecamm, then you now have access to the virtual microphone. And so we're gonna break this down. So I will show you an example of how do you set it up? And also let's look at some of the audio. So setting audio to a scene or just playing audio on its own, regardless of the scene. And then also I have a Zoom meeting open so we can take a look at Zoom and I can show you how you can select that microphone and it really is pretty straightforward so let's get into it and if you've never met me before and you're wondering who i am my name is kat and i help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations and i really do think using graphics even really simple ones like showing your name on a slide or saying what we're talking about having that big and available visually that helps people it keeps them a little bit more engaged rather than only a talking head. So I am a really big fan, but music can definitely make a difference too. I use music in my virtual workshops. There are a few ways to do it, but this microphone, you can kind of set everything up in advance and have it all ready to go and it will come into your Zoom. So what we are going to do now is a little demo view. Oh, that's not the demo view. <laughs> what? Okay, why did that happen? All right. <laughs> I have it set so that it plays my demo and it didn't. Okay, here we go. Live demo mode. Okay, this is what I wanted. <laughs> okay, so we've got the demo mode. You are now seeing my desktop and my desktop right now is exclusively Ecamm. If you haven't seen Ecamm before, this is what the interface looks like. This is what's on my computer right now. I'm going to go to just a plain main scene this is my main camera. You can see these are, this is how I control my scenes. This is my overlays, the comments and reactions. So those are live right now. We have my sound level so I can keep track of my microphone. Over here, which I don't often have open, is my sound effects. So these are where you can get some built-in sound effects. You can also load in your own audio files. And we're gonna talk about those today. And then over here is the camera effects, which we will not be talking about today. But I do wanna first say, how do I turn this on? Because it's not automatically enabled. So when it comes to Ecamm, just like your virtual camera, you also need to enable your virtual microphone. So you will go into output, and this is where you have your virtual camera, and now you have your virtual mic. And so you wanna make sure that you turn that on. The very first time that you turn on the virtual mic, you will have to go through an initial setup, but once you've done that, you are good to go. Now the virtual mic is on. What, what this means is that if I have anything in this scene that has audio, this will, along with any graphics, will accompany me. So there's my microphone. You can see my microphone here in the sound levels, but anytime I play music. So let's say that we start, I'm gonna, I usually have a shortcut, but let's actually just say that I start playing this folder. I can keep track of my sound levels here. So I can adjust these and monitor these. And if you play a video, maybe we have a video file, you would see the audio here. And if you played something into your system audio, you would see it here. So you can play with these levels. And right now, 
I am scene agnostic, meaning I could change, I'm in this main camera, I could change to another scene, I'm in a totally different scene, or play my title scene. It's still playing because I've just pressed play. That is different than attaching your audio to a specific scene. So I actually have a sort of sample scene, and this would be an example of something I might play in a workshop where I'm, I'm getting people to do a short exercise in the workshop, and I've asked them, I just put a generic thing, answer the next question in your workbook. Well, with this example, I'm, I wanna play some music. So if I wanna play one individual song, so here I've got stream beats, uh, which is copyright free music and no lyrics in the ones that I have here. If I wanted, I could just put one song. I could kind of just, oops, <laughs> I grabbed, it's this mouse. I hate this mouse. If I were to grab one, I could drag it and drop it in the scene. You can now see that that song is in the scene, but maybe this is a really short song and I don't necessarily want that. I can X that out and I can say, you know what? I want this folder here, pastel. I want this to be in the scene. And this is a folder, meaning when one song is done, the next song will start playing. So this is a way to add multiple things, especially if your scene is pretty short. You will also see a little dongle here. So you could say stop when the scene ends. So now if I go to the next scene, which is my main camera, the music stops. For something like a workshop, this is what I would want. I would want to have your countdown connected to music and then when that music stops, when the exercise stops, I don't wanna be playing music necessarily. If you do, that's where you can untoggle that and then the music will continue to play or you can control your music either using the sound effects panel here, like play, pressing start and stop, or you can have a shortcut. For example, if I click on this, I can say I want to add a hotkey. So you don't need to have a stream deck or a loop deck or any of that. You can set your own hotkey to be able to start and stop this music. So that is something that you can do as well, which is a really nice way to just be able to toggle something on and off. And if you've got this hotkey and it's the playlist, you're just starting and stopping. Or I can also, instead of dragging and dropping, say I want to add this to a scene so I can click now I've just added it to the scene and I'm going to X that away. So this is setting up our music. So now let's take a look at, let's pop out of this for a second. I have a scene set up with Zoom. Zoom is not showing up. Why is Zoom not showing up? <laughs> That's not the Zoom I want. Where did the meeting go? Okay, we're gonna start a new meeting and it's gonna be wonky for a moment. There we go. Okay, I think I know why. I think it's because I did do a demo recording just to verify everything was working and I didn't restart. So that's on me, that's on me. Okay, we have Zoom and you can see with this Zoom window, right now my camera is off. I don't wanna have the infinite loop, but if we go down to my microphone down here at the bottom, you'll see this big list. I have a lot of different sources, but for my microphone, I want to choose the Ecamm Live virtual mic. So typically when I join a meeting, I am just using my microphone. It's just me and my voice. That's the only thing going into Zoom. But in this case, I want to have the virtual microphone so that anything I play like that countdown, the music will accompany it. Or if I have a sound effect, the sound effect will accompany it. Or if I play a video clip, you will hear the video clip come into Zoom. Something that is really important, in my opinion, is for you to also go up to here. So original sound. And if you don't see this, you wanna go into your Zoom settings and you wanna enable the ability to turn on your original sound, meaning Zoom is not gonna mess with your audio. This is really important because Zoom is trying to detect background noise and it's trying to suppress it. It is only looking for your voice. And so you wanna make sure that if you want that music playing, you don't want Zoom to be fighting. So when once this is enabled, you can just toggle that on. Personally, when I have a workshop, I like to have a little checklist where I will actually say that I uh, turn original sound on. That's on my checklist of things to do before a workshop so that I can remember to turn that audio on. 
I would also say if you are running a meeting where you are using sound, I think it's a really good idea for you to go into Zoom by yourself, run a little test and play through the scenes. For example, when I run my Elevate Your Voice workshop, there are video clips and I want to make sure that those video clips are coming through clearly and I wanna check the sound levels. I don't want to blast people's ear off with these video clips for them to suddenly be way louder. That's really jarring for a participant. I also don't want it to be too quiet. So I will run a demo meeting that I record and I go through my scenes, I speak, I also check to make sure, am I muted when I wanna be muted, like while a video is playing, and am I unmuted when I wanna be unmuted? For example, if I were to go to this countdown scene and talk, I would be muted. I realized I was saying stuff, but I knew I was muted in that case. So you wanna make sure you're also testing are, is your microphone on when you want it to be on? And when it's not, you also wanna test those levels. That's a really good reminder because if you then, the second thing you wanna do is play that recording back and make sure it sounds good. That's often where if I have forgotten original sound, it becomes very obvious because the sound is very choppy because Zoom is trying to fix it for me. So you wanna make sure that you turn that on. And again, if you don't see that option at the top of the window, it just means you need to go into your settings and actually enable that. Okay, <laughs> that is, that's actually how easy this is. You wanna enable your virtual microphone in Ecamm, just like you do with your virtual camera. And then you wanna set up your scenes with your audio or set up your shortcuts so you can quickly play and stop playing the music or audio si sounds that you want or video files that you want. And then you connect it to your meeting. It's, it's actually that easy. I will say that it works for guests as well. So if I wanted to bring on a guest, let's say I wanna have a really nice visual with my guest. I wanna have their name underneath. I wanna control it like a producer and have that look really nice. Or maybe you actually just want to have someone come in and speak and you're not even showing yourself they're the guest spot and you can have nice graphics and visuals, slide share, and you're sort of producing in the background. You can do that and bring that person's microphone. Just like if I had an interview right now, anything you hear in a YouTube live stream, you would hear it through the virtual mic. Now the challenge is that the virtual microphone is not an audio routing software like Loopback or like VB cables. The, the challenge this presents is let's say I brought on a guest and the two of us go into a Zoom meeting and it's nicely produced and it looks really fancy, but then someone else in the Zoom meeting speaks, you have to, you have to route the audio back. And so that's where you, if you're running a more complicated setup, you may still need to use audio routing software and this is where you always want to test. However, if you are running a panel or a webinar where there isn't a two-way interaction with voices, maybe it's all typed, people are just adding questions, you as a host can always put out those questions to your speaker. So if there's less interaction, then you don't have to worry about that, but it will not do everything. So keep in mind that it, there are some limitations with what this can and cannot do, because it really is just an option that Ecamm has enabled so that you can bring in all your audio that's in Ecamm can then filter into one microphone source that you can select in Zoom, Teams, or another uh, web conferencing software. However, it's not designed to be an audio routing software, so it's not gonna replace any of those. So I really wanna keep that in mind. But ultimately, you can now bring your effects. For example, if I wanna show a nice title in my Zoom meeting, but also play some music or some sound, or if I wanna do a countdown scene, like this with some music, I can do those things and I can bring those into my meeting just like I can bring my visuals by using the Ecamm Live virtual microphone. And this really will help you to take your presentations to the next level and they can be more well, engaging and professional.